Yes, so please, hi everybody. yes, <laughs> come on. Um, so as you just found out, my name is Jan, and I'm gonna be talking about financing startups through online platforms. And uh, I actually realized that this title is a little bit misleading because uh, when I told people what, what the subject was, everybody thought that I was gonna be talking about Kickstarter and crowdfunding. And I'm actually gonna be talking about angel investing. Um, uh, but that's okay, like even if people came here thinking that this is gonna be about Kickstarter, um, it, it's, it's, it's still fine because I do want it to encourage everybody to, to think about investing and invest and uh, show how easy it is nowadays. Uh, so I'm gonna start by giving a little bit of background uh, on myself. Uh, I grew up in Poland, in Gdańsk, uh, and when I was 20 years old, I moved to the US. Uh, I went there f uh, for university. I studied uh, applied math at Harvard. I was also a competitive swimmer, and uh, after I finished school, I went to work on Wall Street. Um, back then, which is 13 years ago, everybody with that type of background uh, pretty much ended up going to finance. Uh, most Students actually wanted to get a job in finance. That's where the good jobs were. Um, and uh, you know, a good illustration of that is that um, the most popular major at the university then was economics. Everybody wanted to study economics. Nobody wanted to touch uh, computer science. That was like a horror, uh, horror story major. Um, uh, like a lot of problem sets, difficult professors, and so on. Nowadays, all the students from Harvard want to go to Silicon Valley, uh, and computer science is the most popular major on campus. So that kind of tells you about the, um, how the times have changed. Um, anyway, uh, so I did finance for about six years, then I, um, I quit my job, uh, and I started traveling, trying to like, rediscover what I want to do uh, with myself, and I was uh, doing a little bit of photography and, um, and got into some businesses that were non-tech, more traditional businesses. And um, I, I was actually a little bit anti-technology for a while and um, I, I kind of saw how it was taking over our lives and I wanted to, uh, to resist that and then I kind of had a, a change my mind and I became, uh, I became an angel investor. Uh, and at first, you know, I, I didn't work in technology before, so it was it was not easy to get uh, access to the to the investment opportunities. So I spent a lot of time thinking how to get into it, and I was reading a lot of blogs and trying to talk to people, and I discovered these online platforms. So that's what I'm going to talk about. Um, but let me start by like kind of pointing out why one one might want to invest. Uh, the obvious one is a financial gain, but it's actually not so obvious because a lot of people that have a little bit of money, they actually often invest for other reasons. You know, they think it's cool, they want to uh, be part of something. Uh, and those are all valid reasons, but with startups, so many of those companies go to zero and lose all your money that if you don't have financial gain as a as a priority, you're probably gonna lose all your money. So this is an important one. Um, interesting, uh, you know, obviously it's a, it's a very um, fast changing world right now. And uh, you know, when you invest, you get to see things from the inside. Um, challenging, as I said, um, a lot of these companies lose money, so, so it's not easy. Uh, if you don't like the challenge, you're probably not gonna uh, be a good angel investor. Uh, and community, that's something that I discovered coming from the finance world to the startup world. There's a big difference in how people interact with each other. Um, it, this is a, a lot more friendly and supportive. Not everybody, of course, is uh, friendly and supportive, but overall, it, 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 it's a much nicer community. People willing to help. And some of the brightest people in the world right now are all part of this community. Something that I don't have here on the list uh, that is also important is uh, the educational aspect of investing. Uh, even if you're not an if you don't want to be an investor, sort of like a full-time investor, uh, you learn a lot about different companies and how to run business by looking at uh, a lot of pitches and seeing how other people run their companies. So uh, it's actually helped me with uh, other businesses that I'm involved in that aren't in tech 
investing in technology helped me kind of uh, think about business and apply a lot of the tools and uh, strategies to those other businesses. So the education, uh, even for a founder, is really important. Um, so as I said, the, the world of angel investing is uh, um, not so easy to access. Uh, until a few years ago, you really had to be uh, part of a select group of um, individuals, mostly in Silicon Valley, if you wanted to uh, access these uh, top technology opportunities. And you had to go there, live there for a few years, mingle, go to a bar. And then after a while, people would start showing you uh, possibilities to invest. And uh, you know, some people like that, some people don't. Uh, now it's possible to invest like this from a computer. Um, you know, like technology is trying to change the world, and a lot of investors, they invest in companies that are going to disrupt industries. And the, the world of investing and venture capital is being disrupted right now also. Um, so, so I talk about these online platforms. Uh, and there are, there are many of them. Uh, most of them are American. Uh, but not all of them, and most of the companies are American, and most of them are actually from San Francisco, but not all of them again. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm not going to name all of these. The, the most important one is called AngelList. It's uh, probably, I mean, it's like a Facebook of angel investing. A lot of the, um, you know, pretty much everybody is on it. It's a little bit, uh, it's not super transparent. You have to do a little bit of digging yourself to figure it out. Um, but this is the first one, it's the biggest one. Uh, it grew out of a, a blog and, a, and an email list, and uh, they've raised a lot of money, a few hundred million dollars recently. Um, and Funders Club, it's, it's another one. They, um, they primarily invest in Y Combinator companies, so you, know, you can be here in Poland or in China, and you can invest in Y Combinator company through these platforms, so you don't need to go and attend demo day there and spend money on tickets and so on. How those companies differ, those platforms differ, they all have a slightly different profile. Some of them are geographical, some of them are uh, the types of companies that raise money, um, also how, how those platforms make money themselves. Um, you know, s some of them charge a commission on how much money is being raised. Some of them charge a percentage of the profits. So if I invest through AngelList, AngelList only makes money off me if the company that I invested in, um, uh, the value of that company, is, company increases. So the incentives are there for these platforms to put on good deals. You know, it's not, um, it's not just random stuff there uh, that people are trying to extract money from you. Um, WeFunder is another one uh, that is quite popular in the US, and that one is, uh, the, the laws in the US just changed in the, until last month. To be able to invest in private companies, you had to be an, what's called accredited investor. And that means that you had to have either $200,000 of yearly income or a million dollars uh, worth of wealth, excluding your house. So it wasn't for everybody. Um, now the laws have changed, and anybody, anybody can invest in these companies. And, um, some of those platforms are staying, only allowing accredited investors. Some of them are actually going to go after anybody, and that's anybody from anywhere in the world. And uh, because they're targeting different investors, the amounts of money that you can invest in these companies are much smaller. I think WeFunder, uh, the minimum investment is $100. So if you have $100 and you want to invest in a technology company, you can go on WeFunder and invest in a Silicon Valley disruptive technology. That was not possible a few years ago. Um, so I have a few examples here of companies that raised money on, on these platforms. The red ones are uh, kind of Polish companies or Polish connection. UXPIN was one of the first companies that raised money on uh, AngelList. Estimote, uh, they got an uh, allocation from Funders Club, and then Jiver, um, it's a company based in London, but it was started by a Polish guy, and they do their manufacturing in Mielec, I think. 
Um, anyway, so if somebody is interested, that, that's a research project to look at these, uh, all these platforms. Time to figure it out, but it's a lot less time than what it used to be. Um, so I also want to talk about advantages of different approaches. Like the, the offline world is not going to disappear. Like people still are going to invest directly, write bigger checks. Um, um, and they, the offline versus online, they each have some advantages. So for investors, the, um, the big, the big in, uh, advantage is the, the access to deals. That's something I already talked about. Uh, you know, overnight, you can get plugged into that uh, great deal flow from around the world. Um, and as I said, it's, it's vetted deal, deal flow. These are not random companies. These are, some of them are uh, top companies. Actually, I'm going to go back a couple slides. So the, the gray uh, names, those are companies that raised money on these platforms early on and are now unicorns. So Cruise Automation raised money on AngelList last year. I don't remember exactly valuation. It was five or $15 million valuation. They just sold to General Motors for $1 billion. So that was a big win for, for this online community because it was an exit. The other ones like Instacart and Zenefits, and there are other ones, they, they are worth more than a billion dollars, but they haven't had an exit yet. Um, so these are real things. Um, so to go back to these advantages, uh, so I'm talking about the separation of the deal sourcing from the decision making. So the, traditionally in this venture capital business and angel investing, um, you know, like a lot of the work was actually done on the on the on the being in the right place and finding these companies, and then separately you had to make a decision: do I want to invest in this company or not? Uh, and not. Is everybody is good at both things. You know, you might be a great decision maker. You might have a great view of how the world is going to change, how the technology is going to change. But that doesn't mean that you're going to be great at going to these events, networking events, and schmoozing with people and getting invited into these deals. Now you don't have to be schmoozing. You can just go online and uh, make your decisions. Um, Small investment size, that's uh, also something I kind of mentioned already. You know, angel list, the minimum investment is typically three to $5,000. Uh, so is Founders Club. Some other sites have an investment size of $100. So, um, so that allows a lot more people to, to do this. Also, what that allows is diversification. So, you know, if you can invest small amounts of money, you can think about your portfolio very differently. You can actually think about, like, use financial um, theories for, for portfolio strategy. You know, you can think about certain factors, geographies that you're going to allocate your money to. Uh, you can invest in two companies in the same competing space. Um, you know, like, kind of take away the risk, uh, for, you know, like the, the execution risk, team risk. There are all sorts of risk in angel investing that in the past, you kind of had to take uh, because you were only allowed to invest in, you weren't allowed to invest in two competitors because nobody will let you do that because you, you would see the insides of both companies and the founders wouldn't want that because they don't want to share their secrets. So you had to pick your team. You had to pick Uber or Lyft. Um, and now, online, if Uber and Lyft are both online, you can invest in both. Um, and Access to information education, that's also something that I mentioned already, but I'm going to repeat it. You, you just get to see a lot of different companies. Um, and so you kind of see things ahead of time. Uh, and when you, especially if you're in Poland, um, you know, like, I mean, things arrive here a little bit later. You know, things are connected, but it still takes a little bit of time for things to spread out of the Silicon Valley. If you Investing in companies there, um, you kind of see what the conversation is. You see what people are talking about. So it's, it's a good thing. But there are still advantages to investing offline. And one of them is uh, what kind of relationship you're going to have with a founder. Um, it's more anonymous when you invest online. So when you invest sort of in the real world, you get to meet these people. Um, so you can be an advisor, you can influence how the company is doing, you know, you can express your opinions on stuff, uh, which is, it's kind of fun, but it's also, um, you know, if, if, if you have actually good things to advise on, you can, you can help the company. 
You can do that online, but it's a little bit harder. Um, if you think about being an investor as a, as a professional, uh, when you invest offline, um, your track record is more valid. It's more legit legitimate. Um, because you kind of, you know, you show that this was kind of you sourced that deal. Whereas when you're investing online, you're kind of following. It's the platform that did a lot of the work. So if you're thinking about raising your own VC fund or um, being a super angel um, or whatever, or being like an adv a wealth advisor here in Poland, uh, you know, like the track record is going to be better if you do it in uh, you know, offline. Um, no US accredited rules, so when you're investing offline and you invest here in Poland, you don't have to have these uh, laws about uh, your income level and so on. Uh, there are probably different laws they have to stick to, but they're usually not as drastic. Like US is actually pretty drastic in that respect. And the final one is that you're probably supporting local companies, which is also important. I think um, it, you know it's nice to invest in, in the area where you live because it influences other things. So online, you are more likely to be investing in a company in another part of the world. Um, for founders, um, so there are some big advantages for founders also. If you a founder that is raising money on, uh, on AngelList or any of those other platforms, these investors become your fans. And they are more like, I don't want to qualify, like say that some people are better quality than others, but um, the, the, these founders can, they, they're usually more sophisticated, they have their own network, so they can really help the founders with um, whatever these guys need, you know, like whether it's raising money or whether it's sales strategies. I, I get a lot of emails from the companies that I've invested in online, and I never even met those founders, but I'm on their email list, and they ask, you know, like we're doing this and that, or we're trying to hire an engineer in this space. Um, if, you, if anybody knows of anything, like help us out, you know? So, so that's a big advantage. Um, the timing and size of capital inflows, uh, that's, it's, it's partly a function of the, uh, the online uh, investing, but it's also a function of the rise of super angels. These are these kind of professional seed stage investors. Um, basically, in the, in the older days, you had to go from s stage to stage to take money, you know, like, and you had to reach these um, roadblocks, milestones, whatever, to be able to take money from VCs. And if you didn't reach a, a level, it's like a game almost. If you didn't reach that level, then you weren't able to go forward. Whereas now, you can get money from these platforms a lot more gradually. So it's, it's, it's a more efficient um, ecosystem. Um, additional source of capital, as I said, now you have people investing from all over the world. So a lot of uh, you know, like people with kind of my background in finance in New York, it was really hard for them to access these companies. Now, a lot of them are going to these platforms and they're, they're putting a lot of money to work. Um, so, so there's just more money in the ecosystem. Also, people from China, you know, like real estate guys in China or doctors in Australia, they are putting their savings into these companies. So there's just more to go around. Um, Easier to avoid annoying angels. Some angels are really annoying. They call, they ask silly questions. They don't know what they're talking about. You know, if, you on, if you've taken money online from them, you're kind of separated by a wall from them, so you don't have to pick up their phone call. Um, you have that option, at least. And cleaner cap table, what that means is that um, when these platforms invest in, in the company, when, when, you, when I invest through AngelList in a company X, they don't actually see my name on that uh, on the cap table. AngelList is going to create one entity, and all the investors that went into this deal they figure, they they go in as one entity. So so it's you know there could be 99 guys in that entity, but on the cap table there's only one item, which is great when you're trying to raise money later. Uh, it's um, sometimes it's a it's a hassle when you have too many investors and VCs don't like it. The disadvantage for founders, a lot of founders are still uh, are kind of protective of their information. So um, they don't, you know, like when you put these deals online, more people are going to see it. So in certain situations, that is a real disadvantage. If you're working on something truly revolutionary that no one else is doing, then it could be a problem. Um, 
but in many situations, actually, founders are a little bit too paranoid. Uh, most likely, if you're working on something, somebody else is working on something similar already, too. And this sweet spot uh, that's going to, when the online and offline start interacting with each other and influence each other. So the more you invest online, you get to meet other investors, you get to meet founders, um, and first you meet them on the internet, but then you can actually meet them in person. I've met a bunch of my contacts from AngelList in person. A lot of the founders, um, so I, I live in New York right now, so a lot of those guys, they when they come through New York, they're like, oh yeah, you know, like you invest in our company, let's meet, and um, so, so you expand your network uh, into the real world and vice versa you can take the real world if you have a company that you invested in here in Poland at an early stage you can actually uh, take that company can help that company to go online um, you know so if you have these connections online it's going to be easier for you to bring that company online than if you just woke up today and said hey I want I want you I want this company to go on angelist it's, it's harder because you you know those, it, it helps to speak to, so, to somebody on that platform before. So to summarize, I think there's no excuse to not invest right now. Even if you're a student, you have $100, you should put it into use. Or, and if you have $100,000, you should also put it into use. Um, and if you have any questions, you can find me on the Eventory app, which is the official app of this uh, festival and I happen to be an investor in it, so I'm supporting my companies. And if you have any questions right now, you can also ask them, because I'm done. <laughs> okay. Are there any questions? Sorry. Come on. No questions. That's okay. So thank you. Thank you guys. Yeah.